Why Strixhaven is better than Hogwarts. Reason 1. Hogwarts was invented by an anti-trans activist who refers to all its students as witches and wizards. Strixhaven meanwhile refers to all its students as mages, with no gender discrimination there whatsoever. Reason 2. Strixhaven was founded by elder dragons. That's way, way cooler than just some four old wizards. Reason 3. Strixhaven has five colleges. Hogwarts only has four houses. Reason 4. Students get to choose their own colleges, not have some withered old hat decide for them. Reason 5. There is no inherently evil house in Strixhaven. Though you could argue a few of them, including today's deck in Witherbloom, have a somewhat warped moral compass. And that is why Strixhaven is better than Hogwarts in every conceivable way. Now, let's get on with today's episode of Golgari Sacrifice. <laughs> Hello, a person here, and welcome back to another Mash at the Gathering Arena video. It's been a while, hasn't it? I took a bit of time off because I really needed to crack down on trying to um, get some more rare wild cards so I can sh sufficiently show you decks in a high quality with actual access to a good amount of rare wild cards. Uh, what subs uh, allowed me to come back? Well, Fassa's Oracle just got banned in Historic, so I got four. Three rare wild cards from its banning. It did mean I had to delete my treasure hunt deck, but um, I wasn't planning to show that one anyway because you've seen that deck thousands of times on YouTube anyway, so I wanted to show something a bit different. So yeah, I've been trying to get catch up with Strixhaven. It's been a bit slow going. Um, I've been trying to increase my gem count quite significantly. Um, I've got some way, but I'm still um, some way off the mastery pass, so I might not even get the mastery pass to Strixhaven at this rate. Considering that Dungeons and Dragons is only like a month away or so, um, then I, th I think it's only a month away anyway. Um, it should be too long now I think about it. So yeah, I want to try, try and cover some Strixhaven content while I still can before it goes out of fashion. Because I think the Dungeons and Dragons set is going to be a lot better and uh, be a lot more peaked interest for a lot of players. Especially because it combines Magic the Gathering with one of the greatest RPGs ever made. The granddaddy of all of them, really. But yeah, um, today we're playing a Golgari Sacrifice deck. This is one of the decks I've been trying to craft through rare wild, wild cards a lot and opening countless Strixhaven packs. So this is um, naturally what I'm going to lean towards, towards most. Now, you have seen a lot of these Golgari Witherbloom decks running around. A lot of them have been combining, um, I think, Witherbloom Apprentice, Plum the Forbidden, and Sedgemore Witch. We have a few of those, but I wanted to do something a bit different and focus on a pure Golgari Sacrifice deck, which sacrifices creatures for effects and has other ways to get them back as well. So, let's have a look at the cards we're running and I'll explain them card by card. Four copies of Eye Twitch. So if 1-1 one, one flyer and when it dies we can learn. So this is a really nice for providing card advantage when we sacrifice it. But it also allows us to uh, provide a creature that uh, another creature in this deck will really like. Now when we eye twitch dies we can go and get from our sideboard containment breach where we can destroy target artifact or enchantment. If it has to be something cheap like a maze mine tome for instance then we get to create a 1-1 one, one black and green creature token with uh, when this creature dies you gain one life. Four copies of Pest Summoning, which was what we're mostly going to get, which allows us to create two 1-1s. One and just for a good measure, Introduction to Annihilation, just as a, a um, red button um, exile to stop the opponent from winning. So yeah, that's the sideboard. I've already gone over that, but that's just because of how it works now. As you can see, sideboards are now seven cards, so that's um, a bit of a disappointment, but it is not really too something, something we can get too hung up on. Now this deck is quite cheap overall because we also have uh, two copies of Malakia Rebirth which is, allows us to, to re-sacrifice a creature then pay this to uh, make that creature come back so we can get the effects of it dying but we'll also get to keep it. So this is really good for something like Serrated Scorpion for instance where when it dies it deals two damage to each opponent and you gain two life. 
And so the, the rebirth is why we have a um, lot more than just um, four learn cards in our sideboard because we can theoretically get all of them in the, in the game by reusing the same eye switch. Now, onto the two drops. We have Plum of the Forbidden. I wasn't initially running this card on this, but I just feel that it's actually a lot better in this type of deck than Village Rites because we, wanna, we create a lot of creatures, so if we can sacrifice them en masse, we can really get their effects to pop off a bit more. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's just a continued draw into more cards and uh, hopefully find what we need. Three copies of Genus Soul Steeper. Now, I'm only running three copies because it's legendary, but uh, it's actually quite an important card, so I could consider going up to four if necessary. But um, So, Dina says, when you gain life, each opponent loses one life. And you, for one mana, you can sacrifice another creature and give Dina X plus zero. But uh, we do it really mainly as a sack outlet, so we can get something like Eye Twitch or Serrated Scorpion to sacrifice themselves and uh, get us additional goodies or do more damage. Two copies of Fiend Artisan, which uh, gets plus one plus one for each creature card in your graveyard, and it's another sack outlet, which we can then use to shoot up other things. So we can sack a Serrated Scorpion and get another Serrated Scorpion, for instance. So we'll be doing that for quite cheap, really. But once we've got enough creature cards in our graveyard, we can then sack Fiend Artisan to tend the pests. Uh, so for value, we can then have it to, as a protection where we can create X, 1-1 one, one black and green pest creature tokens, where X is the sacrifice creature's power. So we can get huge value for mana by taking creatures that uh, get a high, high um, power and toughness total and sacrifice them to tend the pests. And we're keeping things cheap for a later reason, which you'll see. Four copies of Bastion of Remembrance, yeah, this is how we're going to win the game. Bastion of Remembrance is mainly in here because, uh, well, it, it, whenever we sacrifice a creature, we drain our opponent for one, so uh, we sack some Redina, and that will sort of, hit a Serrated Scorpion, for instance, and then that also triggered Bastion of Remembrance, and then in turn trigger Dina again to make our opponent lose one life when we gain life, so it's a uh, fast draining. All stuff and we don't we don't generally want to attack with this deck. We just run out of Bastion of Remembrance, um, have a white human soldier creature token, and then drain our opponents. We also have Sedgemore Witch, so uh, this is a uh, really good because it lets us create uh, one ones whenever we craft cast an instant or sorcery spell or copy it for that matter. Which um, is only really going to pay if, if be any good with Plum the Forbidden. So. We pretty much had to include that anyway, so yeah, we basically, when Plum the Forbidden and Sedgemore Witch are out, we basically get to uh, sacrifice a bunch of creatures while still keeping our board presence. And if we sacrifice pests, then the drawing cards with losing one life part, the lose one life is pretty much negligible because we're gaining it back anyway with the pests. Four Love Struck Beast, uh, well, because we, we, we make a ton of 1-1s one in this deck, so having a Love Struck Beast out, a 3 mana 5-5 five, five that can only attack if you have a 1-1 one, one is pretty much uh, essential, really, because um, it just starts off also creates a 1-1, one, one, but uh, we have stuff like Eye Twitch and all of the 1-1s one, that we get from the pests, as well as a Scoot Swarm. Yeah, we're playing Scoot Swarm in a Sacrifice deck. Now this sounds um, really bizarre because Scoot Swarm is a win condition all in itself, but think about it. Every time you play a land, you're creating a 1-1. One, one. That's free sacrifice fodder for Bastion of Remembrance. So you basically uh, have a, this uh, repeatable um, generation of tokens which uh, they can then create sacrifice fodder for something like Dina or Fiend Artisan or Plum Forbidden, which you can then use to really go out off pop off and really do some major damage. Um, I really wanted to try a Scoot Swarm in a Sacrifice deck and I think it could be a really interesting addition to create stuff. But just for good measure, we have place, ways to revive our stuff as well. We have Lurus of the Dream Den for just two of these copies um, because um, we are, it's quite a cheap deck so we can then use it to get stuff like Eye Twitch, Serrated Scorpion, Dina and Fiend Artisan back from the graveyard. Or we can get them all back with Agadim's Awakening, so we don't go over more than a free mana. It's quite. This is why this is kind of really good in cheap decks like this, because um, you can use it to get the Lurus's back as well, which just makes even more ideally for reviving stuff. We want to prioritize. Sorry, not the microphone a bit there for moments. Uh, we want to prioritize getting Dina back. Um, so. 
because that's really our main way that we can interact with Bastion of Remembrance. So, but yeah, that is going to be the deck. Our mana base is quite simple here. We have five swamps, four forests, four dark boar, silver boar pathway, and four fable passage. The fable passage is mainly in here for Scoot Swarm. Yeah, that's all, that's where it, what it comes down to, really. Um, so that is going to be the deck. So let's enter the arena. Feels good to say that after a while. Okay, we're going first, but um, this uh, actually this is a pretty good hand. So we'll keep it. Okay, we're going to go put um, Agadim's Awakening down first. And p play a Serrated Scorpion. And we're going to play Temple of the Mystery. We're going to put our Silver Ball Pathway down, cast Dina. Attack with um, Fiend Artisan. And we're going to play um, this down, tapped, play a Love Struck Beast, and we're going to attack in. Then on end of turn we're going to use the Adina to sacrifice the Serrated Scorpion. Actually, I didn't, I didn't end up doing that in the end, but we're going to cast Scoot Swarm now. Well, it's been countered. We'll play this now down instead then. Play a uh, forest. Attack with everything since we don't really have um, too much to really uh, work around. C dash octopus coming down, right. I will go sack the scorpion now. Actually, no, no, we aren't. We're going to wait until the next turn. Um, yeah, we're going to cast a Fiend Artisan this turn. And then we're going to go and Plumb the Forbidden to um, draw a card. Or two cards, in fact. Okay, that's even better than I thought it was. We'll go ahead and try to attack with um, Dina. They say nothing. Okay, we'll just go ahead and uh, do that. We can then just sort uh, of sacrifice. Uh, uh, do, we, do we need to? Do we need to? They have their own scoot squad. No wonder they counted our Scoot Swarm. Dang blue players. Yeah, we'll take that. So I think we're going to cast the Love Strip Beast this turn. Then just make another one one.
Uh, we'll attack with um, Fiend Artisan and uh, Dina. I like the music to see Dr. Octopus on. Oh, great. Well, that's annoying. Let's see how we can still block one of the Sea Dasher Octopuses, though. Of course, they are just going to make loads of them with Scoop Swarm now, so that is another issue. Oh, come on! Okay, what we're going to do now is um, block with uh, Love Struck Beast and then tend the pests it. And then we can then plumb the Forbidden to sacrifice. Uh, five creatures. Draw a bunch of cards. Play a scoot swarm out. Just why just why not? Really go off and show what this deck can do here, because we're in a good position now. Reach the scorpion. Sacrifice it. And that's game. <laughs> yeah, this deck can go off. Look at that. I think the refinements I made sort of last minute to it have just made it a much better deck and just look at that. Look at that. That's just insane last turn we had. Well, on to the next game. <laughs> We're going to second by the looks of it, which is um, not great with the hand we have. Um, we can play some stuff though. I'm going to go ahead and keep this for now. We're going to go ahead and tap this so we can play Eye Twitch. And they play Love Strip Beast as well. The first one is a similar deck to us, probably not exactly the same because I wouldn't expect that really, to be honest. Maybe guess Bastion of Remembrance this turn. Yep. Well, um, two can play at that game. This is going to be very interesting now. Actually, no. We will take that. We don't. We want. We want to. We don't really want to sack stuff until we can get our our own bastion of remembrance down, which is right now. Says more witch coming down. 
We're going to try it. We should be able to create plenty of blockers anyway. So our, their bastions are going to trigger, but so are ours. So the, basically they end up exactly the same. So here's my spicy tech. Get over Greenland. Attack in. Hunt for specimens coming down. Hmm. So they matched us. And they got necrotic fumes down. I oh, should probably. Um, I'm not sure. About I didn't really have any of those. I should probably have put that in my own sideboard, to be honest. They're probably going to go after the Scoot Swarm, though, which is a big problem. I mean, we could always Agadim's Awakening it back, to be honest, but... Okay, they've pretty much matched us then. So we're going to put this Agadim's Awakening down as a land. And put a love struck beast down. Attacking with Eye Twitch. So unfortunately they're gonna they're probably exile my love struck beast now that I think about it. If we're lucky we get to keep the scoot swarm, but No, the scoot swarm's gone. What a surprise. Right then. Dina's coming down now, which is um Yeah, this could work quite well actually if we now tend the pests on our love struck beasts. Then we're going to go and head and sack it and get rid of something that could destroy their Bastion of Remembrance. They've also got a sack though. Okay, well that's annoying. Yeah, the Sedgeball Witch is helping keep them in there a bit more. Yeah, get a containment breach down. That is just a swamp, isn't it? Yeah. They have two love struck beasts in reserve. So they're going to put one of them down. That's not really a surprise. If we can get our own stage more witch, then that'll be really good. Okay, there's something up here. <laughs> I mean, I guess they have something like Plum the Forbidden.
which is going to really turn the tables on us. No, okay. So we both gain lots of life, and Bastion of Remembrance is going to trigger on mass. So this is going to make things really interesting. I think Dina can help us out here a bit, though. See what the life choice is like at the end of this. I think we win, actually. Oh no, we're so close. Ah, uh, that's a shame. Right. So containment breach coming down. Exile that. So get rid of it. Sorry. No pest token, but uh, we're going to play it out. Never Agadim's Awakening. Play free life, so we can play Lure us. And they're going to tend the pest there with Lovestruck Beasts as well. So this is quite similar to something I have in my deck, really. Um, we're going to say no attacks, because... Um, then we hope the next time we play a Serrated Scorpion, even if they kill the Lurus, then that's fine by me. They have another Lovestruck Beast. Of course, now that they've lost their uh, Bastion of Remembrance, that's going to turn the tables in our favour significantly. Oh, we don't have a separated scorpion, though. What am I thinking of? Right, let's put you down like this. Play the ice bridge. Okay, this is rather awkward, but for the rest of this batch, this is going to be post-commentated because my microphone cut out during the original recording, so... Um, Unfortunately, we're going to give you live reaction to what happens in the game, but so we'll see how it goes from here because there's still a, quite a bit of game to actually go. So with the Eye Twitch's learn ability, I decided to go and get a um, pest summoning after giving some deliberation. So yeah, with the pest summoning, I then tried to go immediately to think about sacrificing my other pest token with uh, Dina, but then I decided to change my mind and then actually just go for the pest summoning and then later sacrifice. I think that's right, I'm, I can't quite remember at this point. Yeah, doing post commentary for this sort of thing is quite awkward. It's sort of better with live reactions. But yeah, it looks like I, I do um, leave it like that. So we're going to wait and see how their turn goes. They do go and cast a hunt for specimens, and that triggers their Sedgemore Witch, so um, they get two more tokens. And so, as you can see, they're starting to really outflank us in the terms of token production. Um, and they get their own containment breach, so unfortunately, our own Bastion of Remembrance is going to go. And that's going to trigger their Sedgemore Witch, so um, we go ahead and start sacrificing some of our tokens to try and um, drain them. We go down to six, down to down to five, we're going to sacrifice another pest token. That gets them down low. So yeah, they're down to two now, so that's uh, pretty good for us, as you can see. Jumping ahead to my turn a bit, we do get a Fabled Passage off the top. We could also play my Eye Twitch out of the graveyard again. Now, unfortunately, if we still had our Bastion of Remembrance, we would have been able to win this turn. But because we don't, um, I go ahead and sacrifice one of the, the um, tokens. Now, this would potentially kill them this turn. So, getting that, them down to zero life would be completely ideal. However, this is where the game completely flips on its head. Because, unfortunately, with their remaining two mana, And as you see Dina resolving there, which would drain them completely of life. Actually, not quite. They put it down, down to one now, so... Um, I'm going to use Fable Passage. So, well, they're down to one life, so... And again, lag. 
screwing everything up again. I'll go ahead and suck the eye switch. Now what I'm trying to do here is if I get a pest summoning, cast that and then sacrifice one of the tokens. But unfortunately they have um, infused with vitality and this is what basically um, saves the game for them because of the life gain. So unfortunately we can't quite clear in this turn. I go and grab another pest summoning anyway to keep them down because we can create more stuff. But yeah, we're really missing our own Sedgemore Witch. So we go ahead and sacrifice one of the tokens there. And that goes down to two, and then we have to do it again. So they're down to just one now. With Bastion and Remembrance, this would have been over by now, but um, unfortunately we don't have much to call. So I go ahead and attack with my Lurus, knowing that I either do have another one on reserve. But I forgot about the fact they can just on mass block and gain the life anyway. So um, yeah, unfortunately this part is pretty much negligible. And then as you can see after that, they just decided to pile all their tokens in front of me because um, Sedgemore Witch has just been a factory for them. And uh, we really need our own Sedgemore Witch to level the scores, but uh, that didn't really happen in the end. So yeah, Lurus is going to die. So unfortunately their triggers resolve before Dina's, so that means that they don't go down to zero life, and they end up on three life. So um, unfortunately that kind of backfired a bit. And then this is where you see the whole game flips on its head. They get another Sedgemore Witch. So basically every time they cast an instant or sorcery spell, they get two tokens instead of one and they also have a love struck beast out and it's getting very very ridiculous now. They go ahead and start attacking with one of their Sedgemore Witches and the love struck beast. And they also attack with two of their tokens. Um, uh, at this point I decide that... Um, what do I decide? I'm trying to remember what I did here. Um, let's see. Okay, they end up pulling back with their Sedgemore Witch a bit. So I ended up just taking it in the end, so I'm down to 17. I figured I had the life buffer at this point, but I didn't realise that quite how drastically this game was about to turn in their favour. So I was thinking at this point, oh, they have three life left, so we can probably um, deal with this somehow. Um, what would have definitely helped me get over the line here is a serrated scorpion, but I uh, didn't seem to be able to draw one. And then they're able to plumb the forbidden and draw a whole bunch of um, cards while creating uh, twice the amount of tokens thanks to several witches, the two several witches. As you can see, this is freaking ridiculous now. They do go down to two life in the process, but uh, they pretty much get a hand restock. So. Uh, at this point, it's looking pretty bleak. We, they have um, managed to leverage, survive what would have been a KO blow for them, and now it's been turned, and then they get their own Dina down. So as you can see, things have pretty much turned completely on its head now. They then go ahead and cast Village Rights, which creates another tokens. So yeah, but at this point, they're multiplying tokens every time they sacrifice a, a, a token, and then just um, draining me in the process because of what they're doing. Okay, so at this point I decide to go ahead and cast the other Lurus. I think at this point, oh, well, they can still get it down to three somehow, but um, here's the problem. I don't have anything that actually drains life, so we go ahead and sacrifice our eye twitch. Just so we can get another pest summoning, I think that's what I get. What I should have done really is try and get um, the introduction to Annihilation, but uh, Necrotic Fumes would definitely be a better use of that slot overall. So yeah, the, the, as you see, it goes on to um, the next turn, we don't end up doing anything to their life total, and now this is a major problem. And because they've got their own Dina, they can start draining us too, and now they get another Bastion of Remembrance down, and this game is um, fast slipping away. 
They then cast the second half of Valentia, and I can't quite remember what it's called. It's the one that allows them to put counters on their creatures every time they gain life, and as you can see, the things are starting to really turn around. So they're again, then going to um, sacrifice one of the pests with Dina. That triggered Bastion Remembrance, so you go up to 5, we go down to 14, up to 6, we go down to 12. So as you can see, they're starting to really eat into our life total. And they go ahead and start attacking with their pest tokens. With the odd mass attacks now, they have 14 power swinging my way, and so I'm in a position where I have to block now. And um, yeah, this is pretty much um, a dramatic turnaround from then after we nearly managed to win the game, which I was so, so disappointed about. But then I wasn't quite sure what to do here because we've got Bastion Remembrance, which is going to pretty much, um, if we block, they get damaged anyway. Um, so I'm pretty much in a position where I've lost the game. And uh, that, this is so frustrating now. Uh, when we go come to blocking, I decide to block the Love Struck Beast because I don't want to kill their tokens. Though I end up uh, having two of them trade anyway because I guess I wanted to reduce the amount of tokens they had, but... Okay, um, I did... Um, I think I pretty much knew I was losing here anyway, so just on mass blocks is just like... Whatever, I guess. Yeah. I believe it, yeah, I knew I lost this point. So then lots of stuff dies, they trigger their Bastion Remembrance and we're down to seven and the rest of the damage is going to um KOS because um they're just getting a lot more with Bastion Remembrance and Dina triggers. So they drain us all the way down to zero from about to 14 life in just one go because they had so much. And um, that is game. A very, very disappointing game to lose after being in such a good position for so long. But we move on to the next game. Opponent going first. Um, but this is a half decent hand, so I'm going to go ahead and keep this. Hopefully we get some green sources coming through. I twitch coming down. We nice to have our Bastion of Remembrance mine, but in search of greatness coming down. Oh, a green land, perfect. Attack. Old growth troll coming down. Well, that's a, a potential problem. We'll do this so that we can then use um, Love Struck Beast. Then we don't attack. Null, pro Null Professor coming down. Basic Conjuration. Tell you what, In Search of Greatness has got a new lease of life from this here. We don't need to send the pests for anything. That's mainly for Love Struck Beast. So Love Struck Beast coming down. No attacks. Elder Gargaroth has come, come down to the field. Hmm.
gem razor. Yeah, and search of greatness is really giving them a significant amount of advantage. I need to really destroy it. Okay, that's um Start evening the odds a bit. This might seem a bit stupid though, but oh, I really want to try and get rid of that in search of greatness. Plus we drain them for a significant amount, so we should be able to survive the onslaught of massive creatures. Actually, wait, wait a minute, what am I thinking? I'm being dumb! Never mind me. Yeah, get containment breach. Discard. I don't have ice witch, I think. Alright, actually, wait, so that's too many. It might be too late. So yeah, I think I made a big mistake there. Okay, um... I'm going to block you... Otherwise I might be dead on board here. Yeah, unfortunately we have to block everything. Which is super annoying. And we lose the game. Big mono green stompy in search of greatness just um, got to us in the end. Oh well, on to the next game. Okay, we're going first. Two lands, um, but I think this is workable, so I'm going to keep it. Famous last words. The two love struck beasts will help out definitely. And they're going to mountain down. Yeah, this might be mono red here. But this is mono red. We play mono red. Get a black. We'll attack for one. Something tells me this, something tells me this isn't mono red. Oh, maybe it is. And there's a bone crusher giant. Okay, we get a Sedgemore witch down. Yeah, this is mono red. But, so we do the last edge more witch immediately. Dang. Frostbite's just such insane value. Get 
get another down. Love struck beast. And we can attack with our token because they can't really block with their rock Knights. We ideally need another land. Torbran. Great. Yes, they're attacking now. Okay, we have another land. That's good. Let's cast another Love Strip Beast. We can attack with this Love Strip Beast now. So let's do that. Down. Dang, and I was just about to. Well, I said Embercleave was always a possibility too. I have Robber of the Rich. But we're still going to block the Tor Brown. They're not attacking the Tor Brown, okay. We're going to block the token. Now, 10 pests on this little strip beast. Now, cast Dina. We're going to attack him, see what happens here. If they block with something that's going to kill the little strip beast and to survive, then. Okay, um. Getting rid of the Annex is nice, I guess, but um, actually we're just going to make more blockers. Okay, so once again this Logitech microphone completely lost connection during this, so I have to post-commentate again. So I tend the Pest and Lost Strike Beast to create a, a whole armada of blockers that should prevent the Mono Red player from being able to actually get through us. They do drop a Faceless Haven though, so that's an additional um, attacker to be wary of, potentially. They look at their face to save and they activate it. No, I don't blame them to be honest. So what we go ahead and do now is um, if we unmask block with our tokens, so uh, we can actually um, drain them for life instead of damaging us. So yeah, we go ahead and um, well, first of all, we block um, with um, Dina because we can then sacrifice one of the tokens. And then what we do is then we just go ahead and um, stick a um, chump blocker in front of everything that they have going, going at us. And then I decided to just stick more in front of them anyway because it can help kill the Anax. And we can also kill the Torbrat in the process. We do leave one uh, token that isn't blocking anything. Which I'm then going to sacrifice with Dina. Actually, no, I uh, sacrificed one of the ones that's blocking Torbrand, yeah. Forgot about that. And then we go ahead and um, get a whole bunch of stuff with blocks, a whole bunch of stuff dies. I forget here that because Dina's died, we don't actually get to drain them, so um, it's. But we do get a whole bunch of life in the process, so. Um, they have a bunch of tokens that they can't block with. We're going ahead and cast uh, Sedgemore Witch. Actually, no, I should go with the Fiend Artism because I don't feel like Sedgemore Witch does much here at the moment. And, well, I know, okay, we, we cast both of them. But they scoop to the Sedgemore Witch coming down, and um, that is victory. So, yeah, that is going to be it for this. Um, uh, it was a pretty uh, mediocre run, to be honest. You're about to see in the bloopers uh, that um, not a lot really went right for us. So, yeah. Thank you for watching this. So, let's go ahead to the bloopers and see what went wrong.
Another angel of vitality. Really? Well, they're gonna... Okay, now they're the Usurka's Light of Hope. Gain six life. Oh, come on! I have to do this to stay in here. We might be able to stay alive, actually. Actually, winning this game is going to be extremely difficult. That's just free now. Uh, yeah, we'll have to sort of, um... Double Elvish Warbuster so and both Elvish Warbusters trigger each other. Oh dear, this is really, really bad. Masked Vandals who potentially get rid of our Bastion of Remembrance. Um, okay, so in response to that, um, I am going to go ahead and activate Dina to sacrifice the Ice Witch and uh, drain them for one, two rather, because of Dina's effects. And we'll go ahead and get a pass on Um, we need to sacrifice this token here. Just make use of our bastion in a moment while we still have it. What have I done? They never cast the graveyard. They could have exiled my bastion in remembrance anyway. I just completely wasted my turn, diet. Okay, this is getting way too out of hand now. Oh, come on! Crap! Well. Basically, we have no choice there. We have to try and sack some of our fodder. Um, we're going to go ahead and um, tend the pests. Or, um, uh, yeah, we'll tend the pests on D. Do I want to do that? Well, too late. We've done it. I've, I've, I've sequenced this completely wrong, haven't I? Dino would have been too. Ah, uh, this is annoying. Well, we're gonna sacrifice these two and start um, draining them. Get a Scoot Swarm, and a Sedgeball Witch, and a Fiend Artisan. But uh, losing Dino is huge. I just look at what we have left, I and mean, we have to block for it as well. This is um, really bad. Down to nine. We go up to 13 though. And another canopy tactician. Elf decks are way too good, I just cannot deal with this. Just, I think it's massively so off. Oh, great. Well, they've pretty much um, won the game at this point. Um, we have, have to block with our Lurus, really. And even then, that's not enough. We go from 13 down to minus 25. That is utterly ridiculous. And now we've pretty much been humiliated there by an elf deck. That's so annoying. Hack! There's going to be a problem here, though, because, um, yeah, I feel like this is going to be a all oh, oh, there's a healing art. Come on. Yeah, we're going to have to block now. This went so fast. I'm surprised we weren't going to attack the angel, but okay, there you go. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, block here. Now we'll um, sack the ice witch so that they don't gain life. Now 
Well, they will now because of how they crease, but... Now, does our enchantment removal, containment breach... Oh, it only destroys. Oh, great. Well, that's particularly bad. Um, we're going to take a containment breach anyway, but... Oh, for goodness sake. Okay, right. Um, yeah, I think we're going to lose this game. And they got this massive board. Yeah, we're just going to concede the game now. It wasn't really worth it. Well, that's blue for material for sure. Righteous Valkyrie. Well, that's annoying. I think we're just attacking with our tokens now. Then we have a favourable trade. With the two bastions of remembrance down. Now, we do have to remember about the shields. Oh, okay, that actually didn't work. Oops. I forgot that shield just basically cancelled out all our 1 1s. And now we're um, dead in the air, I think. Well, okay, I think we lose then. That stupid shield, along with the flyers, just made it absolutely impossible. That's really annoying. I get my strategy down, I still end up losing, which is so frustrating. Quiver's land diet! Urgh! Okay, we got completely land screwed this game. This is just uh, getting ridiculous now. Yeah, they're just gonna just go off and. Um, well, I can't compete, we're just too far ahead. They're just too far ahead here. I'm just going to see it again there because that was just... Um, how can we really do anything when we don't have any lands and they have loads? So yeah, that was Golgari's Sacrifice. Um, well, it started out well, but it quickly went downhill very, very fast. Um, you saw in the bloopers that this deck particularly struggled against mono-white decks or anything with life gain, which uh, meant that we couldn't really take our strategy well, and not putting any removal on this deck didn't help. And we could have tried to get something for removal, but um, there wasn't a lot of space in the deck, and... Um, I unfortunately, I think uh, what really counted against me was the fact that I didn't have Necrotic Fumes. This card would have made a huge difference because then when I Twitch dies, we could have gone in the head, get something, exile a token and exile one of their stuff and that would have made a huge difference. But um, as it is, uh, we were disadvantaged in all the mirror matchups, including that one which went a ridiculously long amount of time. We almost managed to beat that deck, but then they just pulled it back completely against us. So. Nothing I can really do much about there. Well, it was a fun experiment anyway. Um, I probably wouldn't actually play four Scoot Swarm in the deck. I'd probably take it out for another Sedgemore Witch, but I only actually have three of these right now, so um, that's why there's only three and there's four Scoot Swarms. But yeah, that was um, a, a fun experiment in many ways. Um, I, I sort of when originally envisaged it around with something like ten the pests and building out from there. I just wanted to have a proper Golgari deck because, believe it or not, I never actually built a pure Golgari deck on Arena before. It's always been mixed in with some other colour, like I've had Jun decks, I've had Absan decks, I've had Sub Sultai decks, but I don't think I've ever really had a Golgari deck and that is really odd when you think about it. So, um, yeah, that's how this deck has gone. Um, Obviously, um, the competitive version of this deck is completely different. It plays uh, with a Blue Apprentice as a four of. It doesn't really play Dina much. I actually might do play Dina in some places, but I really like Dina as an alternative to Bastion of Remembrance as, in some cases, but they also go really well together anyway. But actually, well, Dina doesn't think that's exactly replaced Bastion of Remembrance, really, but uh, we just managed to get it off really well with Plum the Forbidden, which is probably one of the best cards in the deck. Just giving us a lot of card draw, but it did make us lose out on some board state and um, against that mono green stompy deck we just got absolutely overrun. But yeah, it's good to be back so um, we are, I'll be having more decks in the coming weeks for you. Um, 
As for my other project on the channel, Gaming Anniversaries, um, that has proven to be quite a much larger scale project than I initially, initially anticipated. It is taking quite a significant amount of time, so I don't have an ETA on when that's going to be ready. I'm hoping to get it out by the end of the week that this video comes out, but if it's not out by the end, it'll probably be out the following week. I'll try and... Going back to Arena videos might delay a bit more admittedly, so we'll have to see how it goes. It'll be ready when it's ready. That's all I can say about that. Um, in the meantime, um, thank you for watching this video. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Please share this with your friends so you can watch, get more people watching the channel. Please subscribe for more gaming and TCG content and hit that notification bell so that you can be notified when new videos come out. Also follow me on Twitter at GenericAPerson, all one word. Thank you for watching. I've been A-Person. Goodbye.